If someone is healthy um, over the age of 50 and they start to do something called dream enactment behavior, that is to say they act out their dreams, then the question has to be asked, do they have REM, that's rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder? Now, REM, rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder, or RBD, um, is a dream enactment parasomnia that we see associated with Parkinson's disease, Lewy body dementia, and multiple system atrophy, which are all share a similarity in their pathology, the pathology of the brain, where it disrupts the mechanism that normally would paralyze the body and stop it from acting out the dreams. So if we go back to the premise of what about somebody who doesn't have one of those three diseases and ask the question, well, if you don't have one of those diseases and you start acting out your dreams, does that mean you're going to get one of those diseases? It's a fair question and it is true to say that there are a number of other things that can account for this dream enactment behaviour. So we know the original reports of RBD were associated with people who drank too much alcohol late at night and presumably that must influence the brain. We also know of some medications, often from the antidepressant world, that can also cause this dream enactment behaviour to occur. Similarly, patients who have severe sleep apnea, where they block off their airway, the brain gets deprived of oxygen overnight, can wake up in a sort of confusional state or a confusional arousal. So, there are things that we need to exclude as potential confounders, but if we exclude those and then follow patients who have this idiopathic, so out of the blue presentation of dream and behavior, what happens to them? And the answer is that those uh, studies have been done and they're very interesting because what they report is that if you get someone presenting like that over 50, over the next 15 years, at least 80% of them will go on to get one of these three diseases, Parkinson's, Lewy body dementia, or multiple system atrophy. In fact, when you look at the odds ratio for Parkinson's disease in people who develop this REM sleep behavior disorder, the odds ratio goes to 140 times the baseline rate. That is to say, if my background rate is that I have one in a thousand chance of getting Parkinson's, you can multiply that risk of by 140 times in somebody who develops this dream enactment behavior. So this is a concern, obviously, for those people who are developing that behavior, but at the same time is very important because it actually represents perhaps the earliest window we have for predicting who might get one of these diseases. And the reason that's important is because any therapy that we ever develop that slows the progression of these brain diseases will probably be most effective before they develop or get the diagnosis, i.e. at a time when they only have the dream and outcome behavior. So this is a very hot topic of the research that not only myself, but others around the world are doing and will hopefully form the basis of some future trials trying to stop patients from getting these awful brain diseases in the future.